members of the audience appreciate y'all being here today if i could i'd like to make a few announcements if <clears throat> if you're not satisfied with the decision made by traffic and parking commission you may appeal the decision by filing a subsidiary with the davidson county chantry or circuit court your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the commission's decision we advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. First on the agenda is the approval of the uh, agenda today. I make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, approval of the uh, minutes from the meeting of uh, September the 9th, 2013. Do I have a motion? Uh, Absolutely. I second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Items on the consent agenda, consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda, consent agenda will be voted at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission uh, requests that the items be removed from the agenda. Now, the rules of the public hearing is try to keep your comments to three minutes or less. Each person representing will be expected to offer new information that has not been made previously. Once the public hearing has been closed, no additional comments will be heard unless the public hearing is officially opened. Uh, on new business, bill, <clears throat> bill number BL 2013, Five one five five one. An order audience uh, amending section twelve fifty four two zero zero a nine and twelve fifty four three ten of the Metropolitan Code of Law pertaining to the routes for horse drawn carriages operation by adding the uh, ability of zones to create and by. Uh, delegating duties to the staff of Traffic and Parking Commission. Chip, do you want to try to explain that to us? Yes, I will. Right now we have a code in place that says any change to a route or zone, if you want to use that word, has to come before this commission. And the issue being, that, and our representative from Traffic uh, Transportation Licensing is here, Mr. Billy Fields, um, the issue with that is sometimes we need to change these routes before our next meeting comes around. So. If the timing is poor, we've got to wait 30 days to get back in front of you guys with these route changes. So what Mr. Fields is proposing through this ordinance, um, the ability for traffic and parking staff here to change the routes with his input um, as we need to, instead of coming before you guys every month. Now, if it's a controversial route or anything like that, of course, we'd put it, present it to you. But right now, through this ordinance, we're asking for the ability to change it at our office. And Billy, if you want to help out and the reason behind doing this more than just the 30 day thing. Well, Billy, anyone <clears throat> desiring to speak, we need for you to sign in, give us your, uh, your name and address, please. I will do that. My name is Billy Fields. I live at 902 Boscoville Street in East Nashville. I'm here <laughs> representing the Transportation Licensing Commission. The, when we drafted the ordinance that created the horse-drawn carriage uh, regula regulation in Nashville, we did, I don't think we anticipated anything that we have seen in the, in the last few years. In 2002, we, we knew that Nashville was growing, but I don't think we knew that it would grow at the rate that it's growing now. As it is, with the route, the existing ordinance as it is, when, when the route is created and it's approved, uh, we would, as Chip said, would have to come back and, and request very specific uh, approval from you to do that, which we don't have any problem, except we have so many special events. As soon as a special event happens and if, there, if a street is impacted by that event, it may be that the carriage can't properly run the route. By doing this particular, by allowing your staff to uh, represent you on these issues, it's going to allow us more flexibility, not only in the, um, in the establishment of any additional routes, but it would also allow us to establish zones, which 
church by itself for a special event on, say, the 4th of July, rather than be running on 2nd, 3rd, 4th Avenue, where we know it's going to be closed on the Broadway area, we may want to, we, we may have a zone that would allow them to be working on 5th, 6th, 7th, maybe up toward the courthouse or maybe back over toward the convention center. So mostly what it's going to do, it will impact the public from the standpoint, it will give the visitors to Nashville a much greater opportunity to see more of our downtown area. And it will also give us, it will give us the ability to be nimble through your staff to be able to address any issue that comes along. Commissioners? So this is just for a case-by-case -case basis on like temporary issues? Yeah, Corby, like go to the, let's go to the next slide, like. Corby. See number nine there on your monitor? Currently, the code reads everything you see in black up to where it says parking commission. And there's a current code stops at commission. What Mr. Fields is proposing is to add the word staff there. And if I might add, not just to add staff, but also to add routes or zones. How it is right now, there's a specific route. You have to go down this road, take a left here, take a right here. There's a specific pattern that has to be followed. So this change would also allow for a little bit more flexibility in operating within zones as opposed to a specific route. Correct. Corby, the next slide. See all the terminology in there where I've underlined the word staff? Those are all additions with this ordinance. Now, what, we would, what would remain in place is the ability for carriage operators to appeal any routes we have to you guys. Any zones we have can, can still be appealed. Um, we wouldn't try to take that uh, process away. This just streamlines it a little bit for us back at the office. <coughs> Now this is just a recommendation to council at this point. No recommendation it has to have this super majority vote or whatever. Um, a yes recommendation changes the votes needed, legal help me out. And then a no also changes the votes needed at the council level, correct? Um, according to the Metropolitan Charter 11.905, um, anytime there's an ordinance that affects traffic control, it has to be accompanied by a favorable recommendation of the Traffic and Parking Commission, um, and it cannot be passed on second reading without that favorable recommendation, or with if there's no recommendation, a period of at least 30 days would have to pass before it could be taken up by council. And then after that, the council could pass it by a super majority at a two-thirds vote if there is no recommendation from traffic and parking. How about the staging areas where they are now? Is that not affected by this, or could it be affected by this? It, the staging areas or the loading areas for the carriages would still come before the commission, traffic and parking commission. So we're not proposing any new stands right now. Um, well, like I said, it come before you guys. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm clear, though. This is just for, so, like, say, for instance, like you said, the Fourth of July uh, celebration or something, or New Year's. You shake. What's up? No, this is this is a, a broad application. This is for all zones. For all zones. And routes. So correct. any zone change, any route change, it'll be. <clears throat> <clears throat> this this legislation delegates that work to your staff. I got you. Okay. Billy, if y'all know what other streets you're going to use besides the ones you're using right now? Basically, what we would be at working with track and parking, the police department to more determine more streets what not to use, to be very honest with you. Because public safety is going to be the primary concern that we would have, and we would want to make sure we're not operating on streets that would be a, a public, uh, that would, would be a particular problem. On a special event, for instance, even if it was in a zone, we would say that X Street, this street, and that street would be off limits for that particular part of it. So, again, we we would be working with the special events committee, but mostly we'll be working with your staff to make sure that we're providing a good experience, but also a very safe experience for everybody in Nashville. Okay. Councilman. Uh, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Mr. Fields, uh, as far as you know, there's no objection from anyone with this proposal. And I have you talked with anyone else uh, other than 
just the staff here? Or we, we have talked with the police department in general. We've also had various conversations with uh, carriage company owners. Uh, initially, when this ordinance passed, well, actually before the ordinance passed, in pre-2002, they operated on a very large loop in the downtown area. And we actually came back in and narrowed that down later in years uh, that has basically, you know, actually caused some congestion. This should also ease some of the congestion we believe in the downtown area and hopefully move traffic along much better. Okay, thank you. Corby, one more time with the slides. Did we have to reboot or something? I want to be clear with the commissioners. Um, this just this isn't just about routes, though. This includes the operating time of Saturday and Sunday. What we're going to get into in just a minute with another issue on the agenda. This would give the staff the ability to change the days and hours of operation, if I'm correct, according to the ordinance. One, uh, slide B2 right there. Is that correct, Lula? Beat. That is not a consideration that that I had looked into too deeply, but it certainly does have uh, language to indicate that that might be a factor in, in B2. That's correct. So just be aware of that. This is not just about routes. It pretty much gives, I'll say traffic and parking staff, it really will have to go through the transportation licensing group, but it gives us the ability to regulate the horse carriage operation without having to come before commission unless there's a, an appeal. One of the things I would add, if I may, is we also put this, I asked the Transportation Licensing Commission to review this, and they support it uh, uh, with a unanimous vote. But I do want to assure you, before we do anything with our carriages, especially with related to their operations on the street, we work very closely with traffic and parking in the police department. So this is not something we just, you know, jump up and say, hey, let's make this change. It's, it's, we take it very serious. And, uh, and then if there are issues that come up, we're going to come right back to uh, develop issues that, uh, to develop a response to any of the issues that come up. John. Um, question, um, legal. So what would, what would create an issue that would bring something back to the commission if this was adopted? I mean, if, if someone was, if an operator questioned the staff thing, it would be an appeal, kind of mm -hmm. like what we hear on many other issues. Is that correct? That's correct. And if there were any situations which seemed to make the decision difficult um, or challenging, staff could always bring that back before you for, for input as well. And, and to clarify, it's your staff, it's traffic and parking staff um, that would be making these decisions. Um, I have one more question. Um, yes. What about the appeals, uh, say for instance, uh, some carriage uh, owners or someone uh, has some uh, uh, discrepancy or some some question. Who do they appeal to if they can't come to the Traffic and Parking Commission? Are you? They're going to go directly to you. Well, they would come to me, and I would come to you. The appeal process will still be in place. Um, the approval process, where you having to approve every little route we set, would go away. But if someone didn't like that route, they could appeal to you or that zone, or that time of day. So they still have someone looking out for them in this body if they could appeal to. Just like a traffic signal, sort of, or a stop sign that you hear. Yeah, we want, we want to make sure that we have an opportunity to network with the people who are going to be coming to us and asking us for uh, their, you know, help. Sure. And so uh, we want to make sure that uh, we have the opportunity to do that. So, thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> John, does this seem to be an increase in in this type of business? I think it. Uh, I think there are a lot more people coming to downtown Nashville now than there were when we entered, when we started this. And I think there are many, many more carriage rides going on every night. The carriages seem to be busy, especially on the weekends. But uh, almost any night of the week, downtown Nashville is a very different city than it was when we did the ordinance. I think this will make it again a little bit better, a little safer, and I think it'll make the traffic move a whole lot better in the downtown area. At least that's our hope. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, I would move the adoption of this bill. Chairman, let me, let me ask legal one more question. You were saying that this affects more than horse-drawn carriages, right? It does or, or This it does only affects horse-drawn carriages. Okay. Uh, okay. That's what I was confused. Yeah, I was confused. That's what I was confused. Yeah, okay. All right. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I would move the adoption of this bill. I second. Second. John, second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On the consent agenda, <clears throat> a request to provide complimentary parking for VIP and uh, crew staff working the New Year's Eve event at the Public Square Garage from December 28th through January 1, 2014, requested by the Nashville Convention and Visitors Bureau. Does anyone have any questions about those? I had one question. I just was curious how many spaces? Based on the request that they've submitted to us, they need 50 spaces for December the 28th, 100 spaces for December the 29th, 100 spaces for December 30th, and two, approximately 250 spaces for December the 31st, and 50 spaces for January 1st. Wow. How many total spaces do we have, Diane? There are a thousand parking spaces in that garage. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Um, yeah. How do you work this? <laughs> uh, uh, these uh, uh, spaces. Oh, well, let me, let me ask it this way. Uh, are there any events that are going to be taking place in the downtown area between that time? No, not So will this that conflict time. with any of those? No, it will not. Okay. All right. And according to the contract with the Nashville Downtown Partnership, any request for complimentary parking must be approved by the commission. Oh, okay. Make you feel better. It's all right with the staff. We'll go to number C because that can be a uh, uh, yay or nay, but number B has to be a hand vote. Go to number C, resolution 1013. Remove no left turn on Clark Street at 8th Avenue. Authorized stop on Haynes Mead Circle at Cemetery Street. Cemetery. Uh, Lemon seminary, yeah. Sorry, it can't be a seminary. It could be. Um, There's no getting out. <laughs> authorized valet parking in front of 209 10th Avenue South from 5:30 p.m. to 12 a.m. Monday through Sunday for M Restaurant. Authorized 24-hour loading zone at 404 12th Avenue South in front of 404 12th Avenue South for Hotel 404. Install two-hour parking meters on north side of Lee Avenue, the 10th Avenue South to 9th Avenue South. Authorize no parking on the west side of 15th Avenue South from Akron to Soccer Field Drive uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, let's go back to item number B. This is proposal number 2013M014 AB001. A request to abandon a portion of alley number 515. The easements and the utilities uh, will be retained. From Interstate 65 South to the northerly property line of tax map partial number 08108051900, requested by the Civil Site Design Group applicant. We'll need a hand vote on, on this one, Commissioners. Chip, is there anything you want to say about it before? No, sir. Anyone else? Commissioners got any? All in favor, raise your right hand. 100%. We got to make a motion. Motion for approval. <laughs> Excuse me. Second. Motion, second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Good. All right. Uh, parking report, engineering report. 
standard reports that are included in your packet for review. If you have any questions on the parking report, I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. <clears throat> Commissioners, anyone have any questions? John, go ahead. <clears throat> I noticed this last month. Is any explanation for the lower meter revenue this year? As the standard is, anytime there's a special event downtown, the meter revenue will go down. As you see, it went up $5,000 from the month of August. It's up to 98000 this month, in the month of September. Yeah, it's been below last year. Right. It has a lot to do with special <coughs> events and things of that nature. And also, we've had some meters that have been removed off the street. Okay. And that will also oh, impact that number. Okay. All right. Thank you. Old business. A request to authorize daytime horse-drawn carriages operation from 9 a.m. through 3 p.m. requested by the Cumberland Carriages. This, this was deferred from the June meeting of this year. Does anyone here wish to speak in that? Please give us your name. My name is Sarah Beth Williams, and I, I live in Nashville, over in Upton Lane. I believe you uh, were here last Nashville. time, weren't you? Yes, I came back in the, uh, I believe it was the uh, later part of spring, to uh, see if we could uh, work out some kind of uh, approval to operate a daytime permit for uh, downtown. Um, the reason why I'm coming back to you all, uh, which I had sent an email to uh, Chip Knopf and Diane Marshall, is because uh, I, I, with Billy Fields, uh, know that there things have changed. There are so many tourists in Nashville. And right now, you have um, a lot of senior citizens taking package vacations, and they come to Nashville during the day. Um, I have received a, several uh, requests for reservations for daytime operations, um, and uh, that is not because of you know what I want. It's just the reservations. Uh, you have a lot of tourists from different countries coming to Nashville in different times. A lot of these folks don't come at night. So, uh, and the other thing is, is that I have also received uh, numerous calls from the Omni Resort Hotel to pick up during the daytime hours. Um, and I recently uh, had to get an approval to operate at 11 o'clock just for that time. Um, it would be more sensible for me to be uh, approved to operate during the day instead of just coming down there for just one hour to make, you know, a uh, credit card, you know, money. To, and I can make cash to be able to, you know, pay for my gas and, and expenses at the same time. But, um, you know, I'm really willing to negotiate uh, with you all to see if there was a way that, um, and, and I know that when I came here before, you all were concerned that other carriage companies were going to try to come before the the board uh, here and uh, request a daytime permit. Um, I do believe that it is a case by case um, deal. Um, I do believe that uh, since I am a Davidson County taxpayer, there's only two carriage companies in Nashville, down t that live in, in Davidson County, um, they would like to operate daytime. Most of these companies operate at night. Uh, I have one carriage that I own. I don't have other permits. And um, I agree with uh, uh, Ms. Marshall on having one carriage per company downtown. Uh, and there are some issues with routes and zones, as we've all discussed. But, you know, carriages can move out of the way, even if it's a loading zone. And, you know, when there's a mail truck that comes along or a 32-foot uh, trailer that's pulled in front of Broadway, um, we're, we're allowed to move to a different zone or a different route. And that, that helps us a great, uh, great deal. But my, my deal is, is that I have, uh, I'm getting busier all the time for daytime. And I would like to be able to uh, have that opportunity to make money um, 
because there is so so much competition and other carriage companies that have four carriages uh, with my one sitting there having to uh, go down on the price of a tour and you know when you're able to give a daytime tour people see a whole lot more and we're able to broaden out the the tour the tour itself uh, you know, people, they want, you want these people to come back and they want to have a good experience with, uh, you know, different avenues that we can go on t as well. Um, like for instance, you know, who wants to come back to Nashville and take the same tour and pay the same amount of money or more, you know, those prices could be higher, uh, for the same tour. Um, right now, you know, our route is, you know, from my understanding, it could range from 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Um, so the daytime tour uh, would help my company out a great deal without this many com as much competition. And yes, it should be on a uh, you know company. It should be looked at per company on a you know base to base thing. But um, I myself would uh, have more opportunity to be able to uh, uh, not have to go up or down on my price because somebody else that has four carriages. Uh, is going down to 25, uh, and I don't want to go backwards 10 years. I want to go forward with um, the pricing and, and be able to take people around to see different parts of the city. And like I said, uh, with the Omni Resort Hotel opening up, it's booked up, and we're I'm getting tons of calls to take those people and go pick them up. Um, and it would be uh, it would be saddening for my company and to tell them that I can't do that during the day. When I mean, the hours are from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday, uh, the weekends they're, they're totally different times. But uh, uh, I've been downtown. I've driven down through downtown at 4:30 in the afternoon just to be able to get through, just to get to the lot to get the horses ready, because we're not allowed to be on the street till six. And um, you know, I, I see uh, other slow-moving vehicles that are operating between four and six, which is between during rush hour traffic, and those are the rolling taverns. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I've respected um, Diane Marshall's decision to not operate between four and six because of rush hour traffic. Um, so I believe that three, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. would be perfect time. Uh, like I said, there's only gonna be one carriage downtown. It's not gonna affect traffic at all, um, uh, especially with the routes that we have, at the temporary routes that we have in place now. So I would appreciate it if uh, you all could uh, uh, approve this and uh, so I can operate from 9 a.m. to 3. Commissioner. Uh, my question is back to legal. Where are we in all this or what we just approved? This is a good example of um, duties that would be delegated to traffic and, par traffic and parking staff should the Metropolitan Council pass this ordinance. Okay. Let me tell you, in, in the recent past, or before my time even, um, the reason we didn't want the carriages on the road were mostly because of traffic concerns, but there were no stations for them to dock in and out of the loading zones. And um, if we can figure that out, and if we can restrict it to non-peak rush hours, um, we're willing to give it a try, but I want Diane to speak a little bit about this loading and unloading of where we can put these horse carriages. Basically, the current lo the current locations for the carriages are either in loading loading zones or metered spaces. So we want to look at some additional areas that we can utilize for a daytime carriage operation. I went out today and looked at one on First Avenue South up by the fort, which is a passenger loading zone. So we may want to consider that as a location for you to load and unload your passengers at. Okay. But we'll, you know, we can look at additional locations. Okay. Can I make a request for some? Yes. That you could do? Yes. Um, I, with us being downtown, I see a lot of these, uh, the trash tours and the redneck tour buses. They all park in front of the Country Music Hall of Fame. That's a perfect place for, uh, especially when you have a lot of tourists going in and out of there. And uh what better place to have a carriage out front when, especially when you have one destination to the other. And if you also have uh, a carriage that's over on Lower Broadway that can take that trip over there. We didn't have to charge that much either. So it would be beneficial to everyone. 
currently, based on the temporary route that was submitted to all the carriage companies on Friday, we're not allowing the carriages south of Broadway. But we can review that and reconsider that if need be. Okay. Well, I mean, with the Omni Hotel, you know, they're, they're you know, blowing up our phones to take to pick people up. And it would be nice to be able to do that. I mean, I don't want to have to tell them that I can't do it, you know, because a lot of times they don't understand. This is, this is not just allowing one carriage company. This is opening it up to everyone, right? Each carriage company would have to come before the commission request. Oh, sorry about that. Each carriage company would have to come before the commission and request a daytime carriage operation. I understand being downtown that um, the opportunity for people to take carriage rides uh, is much more so now uh, needed, perhaps in the daytime than before. It's a good thing. But I do have really serious concerns about where the staging of the carriages would be because you do have the businesses along the area where they are now that's probably not going to want to lose their loading zone in the daytime for that. So that's a really big issue there. Um, where they're going to be staged really needs to be looked at. Question. John. Um, so is it correct that, that none of the carriages, none of the carriage routes are south of Broadway? Currently, none of them are south of Broadway. Okay. Here's here are your two routes here. Here's your, what we call the long purple route. And these are brand new to us and certainly new to you. But um, this is the longer, uh, I think this is 1.7 miles right here. I'm not sure. And then uh, that's, that appears longer than it is. We've zoomed in a lot for this map. But, and that's about half the purple. Okay. I mean, I'm stating the obvious is so much of the development in Nashville has moved south of Broadway. The convention center, the Omni Hotel, all along Korean Veterans Boulevard. There's, I don't know how many hotels are planned. Um, so I would think we need to re-examine the routes based on what's happening. I mean, that's where the uh, Country Music Hall of Fame is located, is south of Broadway. Totally agree and with Mr. Fields. In his ordinance, we um, yeah we recognize that oh. definitely recognize that. I tell you what we run into is traffic concerns and new pavement concern. Where we pave a road and the horses damage our new pavement, so that's why we want the ability to change these routes when we need to because we're paving a lot downtown these days. Um, and they understand some of our concerns here, but giving them zones, I'm going back an item on our agenda, but giving them these zones, giving us the ability to change it, helps everything involved, even this daytime operation thing. If this passes, we would have to come back at the November 11th meeting with a staging area, because we're not able to prove that today. If you can find a place in between to stage, and they pass the state time operation, that's fine. But until then, that's been the issue in the past. The staging areas don't open until 6 p.m., so we well, have to work that out. Here's the thing. Uh, when I did the operation, you know, just a temporary deal, um, I'd say probably a couple of years ago, there's one little space. There's only room for really two carriages, not even that. And uh, uh, very rarely do you have loading in that one area. And... You know, there's other places on Commerce too, like I like I had mentioned before earlier. You know, back a couple, two or three months ago, there's there's so, there's a lot of options besides that one carriage stand, but that can be a temporary fix for right now. You know, in order to be able to 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 get the, the tourists that are coming downtown wanting a carriage ride right now, uh, if we could just try to do something temporary to where um, you, you all or whoever is, is developing all this could, um, you know, grant it temporary. I'm, like I said, I'm willing to negotiate that. Um, you know, I'm not asking for the rest of my life downtown during the day. I'm just ready. I just want to operate uh, during the seasons because nobody's going to take a ride in the middle of January, uh, in the middle, middle of July when it's 95 or above. And, you know, um, it's just ridiculous, you know. It's too, pavement's too hot, and uh, you know I want to operate from like 
let's say September all the way to uh, February when we renew our licenses every year in March. So I, I believe that that's, uh, uh, you know, I, I believe that that's being, you know, compromising with everyone involved. And it's not like there's five or six different companies saying, I just want to operate temporary. These are seasonal things. And that should be uh, what you all would want to consider anyway. Because, like I said, you know, you have a lot of people that are concerned with horses out during the day, with the heat, heat, of, the, heat of the day. And, um, you know, like I said, these would be perfect. That way you don't have so much traffic congestion. You already know these carriages aren't going to be out there in certain months time of the year. So when you have uh, carriages that are operating from September in the fall months, um, it also helps with the temperatures being cold too at night. So when you have the sun out and people are going to ride it's, and they're calling for you know 35 degrees, in my opinion, I don't really want to take people on a ride at 35 degrees when I'm just making one ride for the whole night and I've just made my gas money. So if I could go out during the day and take people on tours in a temporary spot just for now until you all get everything situated, I would really appreciate that. I have a question. Um, and it's more, I guess, to the staff on the process <laughs> that will happen, not only in this case, but moving forward with the new ordinance. Um, her request is, it almost sounds somewhat specific to what, how she wants to operate, but how does that fit into when you all process the request? So I guess what I'm saying is, is there, is there going to be some type of already established guidelines of operation for daytime operation, or would an applicant come and put down the times that they would like to operate, and then you guys approve that on a case-by-case -case basis, or will everybody get the same, treat the same treatment when they apply for a daytime operating uh, our, horse and carriage application, if goal, that makes sense? Yeah, our goal would be everybody's treated the same way. Okay, course. all right, so it'll be the same hours. It, just because their code is written that it's each person has to come in and get this permission. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to say you can operate in this high demand area at these peak hours, and this poor guy can't. Right. So everybody gets the same treatment, but for some reason the code is written that everybody comes in individually for the approval. And I wanted to make that clear for you. I, I wanted to make that clear for you because mm -hmm. I remember from the last time you were here and even this time, yeah. you know, I know a lot of your goal is to kind of differentiate yourself from the other mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, that's operators, the main goal. <laughs> but at the end of the day, if they come for the same permission that you're having, then it's going to be the same, you know, access that everyone will have from that point. So I just yeah. want to make that clear to you. Well, that's you know, why I was saying forward. it could be treated as a case by case basis, and uh, but even I agree. if it's even if it's on a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to be treated and uh, and have access to the same thing, so right. it won't be anything specific to you that somebody else won't have access to. Well, what I'm saying is, is that we're only allowed to have one carriage per company downtown. It's not like we're going to have 14 on the street. You're only going to have five, five carriages. So there's not going to be 14 carriages on the street like there would be at night. You'll only have five. And, you know, like I said, when they create zones, we're not going to be in one place at the same time. We're going to be sitting in front of the Hermitage Hotel, you know, picking up passengers and taking them down to their, to their restaurant. You know, it's not like we're going to be in that one little area like we are now, congested with 14 carriages. We have, you only have five, which, which in, really, in, in actuality, that's how long that strip is. It only fits five carriages. Chip or Mr. Fields, I guess either either of you, the two of you, I guess it seems like this needs to be deferred again so that you all can come back to us. One, addressing Commissioner Green's uh, idea of let's look at it south, some areas uh, south, and then just uh, putting this whole piece. If we're just with the resolution that's been approved, it just seems like if we approve this and we'll make a move on this, and we're going to be back here in November. Anyway, so yeah, would it work better if we just gave y'all some time, you and Diane and Mr. Fields, to work with them and try to figure it out and see 
I would also like to understand better about the seasons and when, when you know, you're going to try this on a short-term basis. Is there a fall season and then yeah. a spring season? Yes. You know, some uh, get a better understanding of that, too. Well, that's why I was asking. It's not like it's a, a long-term deal, you know, because uh, Nashville's changing, and we don't know. You know where the tourists are going to go. Like you know, everybody's saying it's south, north. You know, and a lot of it has a lot of its reservations too, yeah. so that we don't have to yeah. pick up at that one spot because we already have to give a 48-hour notice to be able to get that approved to even be down there at a certain time. Yeah. So uh, when you say seasons, um, I'm asking for myself to operate seasonal. To operate from fall in the spring, from September till uh, February, and then you know, like fall in the winter, and then uh, pick back up from March until June, and that's it. Let me ask uh, Chip: um, With the Western is coming in soon, the Omni is coming in, is here, and other developments that are, you know. Uh, over the next 10 years, it just makes it, I just think y'all you, you should go back and look with, at Commissioner Green's um, question about that. But with all that, um, at this point, I'm willing to make a motion to defer it indefinite until y'all are ready to bring it back to us. Second. Well, let, let me clarify one thing that we just discussed, this ordinance. This ordinance that we kind of recommended approval on a few minutes ago is scheduled to be heard by the council November 11th, if I've got my dates correct. Should that pass November 11th, basically it will give us the ability to look at Commissioner Green's ideas and all these other companies can come to us directly for these time of day permits and Mr. Fields can uh, regulate that. But so deferring it doesn't necessarily do a whole lot if this ordinance passes. Because what it would do is I guess it could take it off your plate. It would put it back on the agenda in case the ordinance doesn't pass. It would it would protect Ms. Williams. And I and I could agree with you from that standpoint, but deferring it might um, might not do her any good is because we could probably pass this today and let her begin work if we could find her a place on the street to stage. But is that gonna open Pandora's box for us to have these other four come to us at that point, and now we're stuck between the council passing this resolution, and now you know I'm just yeah. If we can get it all at one time, it just seems to be best for us. With other issues we've had, when we've taken case by case, they just keep coming. The 12 South piece, you know, just keeps coming, keep coming, keep coming. So it, it is a Pandora's box because we're going to have umpteen companies coming in wanting daytime permits. And, okay, the ordinance passes. Billy and Diane have the ability to give those permits for daytime operation dependent on you approving staging areas that are open in the day. Right now we don't even have any that are open during the day. So it's kind of a, so a circular, it's a cyclic event that we don't know how to handle right now without seeing if this ordinance is going to pass. Chip, that's my biggest concern is what's considered a temporary stop for her. I don't think we can just have somebody deciding I'm going to stop here. I think there needs to be definite mm -hmm. loading and places for them. That's true. This is a public forum, and, and without making that announcement publicly of where we might be staging horse carriages, I don't think we'd be doing the right thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. So I'm going to leave my motion on the floor. And it's been second. I'm going to leave it, leave it on the floor, and it's been second. To defer it. To defer it, and indefinitely. So Y'all can get back with the staging as an issue. Uh, Commissioner Green's position of where the routes are opening the routes up for you all to come. You know, south of Broadway, because you got the Omni, you have the Western, you have some other things that are coming up, which are great for your business, for them to be able to come out of the hotel and 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 be able to solicit you, but. Um, that, that's where I am. I mean, I'm up or down on it. But Well, I would like to say one thing about that, though. You know, the longer you wait, the colder it's going to get. And, you know, right now is the perfect time of year with the weather to be able to take rides. And, you know, you're, when you say that other it opens up a Pandora's box for other carriage companies, that's opportunity. That's business growing with us, you know, with small businesses. So... What I mean by that is, is there's going to be there's tourists waiting on more than one carriage. That's great. 
for the city. So, you know, I mean, you know, you're going to have five carriages downtown. That's just five carriages. You know, it's not like you're having, like I said, you're not, you're not dealing with 14. It's just five. Chip, is there um, okay. something that says how many carriage companies we can have? Is there something? I would quickly have to defer that to the transportation hey, license. Yeah, Bill, is there something that says how many companies we can have? There's not a specific. Uh, there's not a specific, specific number in the ordinance. In order for a company to operate, they have to go in front of the commission for approval. The commission has not approved a new company in several years. Okay. Let me now, let yeah. me let me say one more time that just for clarification for you, Ms. Williams, even if we were to pass this today, there's not a staging area to open and close from on the streets that are op that's open during the day. That's why the deferral would not be a big issue because we can't approve a loading area until next month. Is that, Commissioner Sanderson, is that yeah, right. making sense? Is that what you were saying? And that has to come back before us, right? So, I mean, we, okay. so no harm, no foul if it doesn't get past it because if it, even if it were to pass, there's nowhere to load today without okay. them approving. Councilman. Well, you, you basically answered my question, Chip, but uh, what I was uh, getting ready to drive at was um, you mentioned before that uh, there might be one place you could have a temporary staging area so that you could go ahead and get started. Uh, and if that could be something, is that something that we have to approve? Could well, we? yeah, hindsight being 2020, I think it should, I don't think we should just go out and open a daytime carriage stand. Well, this would be a temporary basis and then she would come back uh, later, you know, and, ap and apply again. Uh, after uh, you make out the routes and after all those things are formulated. Well, yeah, uh, we, we'll definitely look into the temporary loading area, but any permanent areas would need your approval. And, and I don't mind us going back to look at temporary areas. Well, We've got to be very careful because, I mean. Well, the, the, that was the one that you mentioned, you know, was your, your suggestion. So I, what I was saying was, is there a possibility we could use that as a temporary place uh, for her to go ahead and get started? <laughs> I support it. I just, I, I got to uh, dot my eyes and cross my T's before sitting here and saying we're going to put it at First and Broad or whatever that place would be, Diane. Suggested. And the concern with that at First and Broad is that it's a passenger loading zone and there's buses that are in there on a regular basis taking tourists to the fort for visit, visiting at the fort. So that would be a concern with that. I just went out and looked at locations late this afternoon and that's the only one I could find just looking. There, there is one that I wanted to make a suggestion on, and it's actually room for one carriage. And I would, like I said, be a base-to-base -base company operation where you could put other carriages that they wanted to. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the same place. But right there across the street from the trolley where they, where they sell tickets across from the, the uh, Hard Rock Cafe, there's a place right there that you can park that's facing the same direction of traffic on 2nd Avenue. And it'll be a perfect place because it's in the shade. It's, there's not sun beating down on you either. And it'll be perfect right there to the left where there's a, uh, there's a place where people sit. Right there at the corner of Cotton Eye Joe's, at, directly across the street from the gift shop of Hard, uh, Hard Rock Cafe gift shop. Okay. There's a but, parking lot there. It's a perfect place. But, but gentlemen, I have a motion that's been second. Can we move on that? Yes, sir. Let's see what else. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of deferring it indefinitely say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Thank you. Was anyone else here wanted to speak in favor or against? Okay. Yes, sir. I'd just like to speak to the whole carriage issue. Just a minute, please. Yes, sir. Uh, Rick Williams, uh, 1733 Needless Bend Road. I do hope your staff and all of you, but especially the staff, will look at other locations for these carriages, possibly open them up to the Germantown area, the Gulch area, and south of Broadway. Right now, you've got them all condensed downtown. And in talking to some of these carriage owners, I think it would be highly favorable to develop some whole new routes and get them away from downtown and let them find a route around the Germantown Bicentennial Mall area, do something in the Gulch and maybe south of uh, around the Korean veterans. So I hope you'll consider that and maybe even have a 
get together with all the carriage owners where they come and talk to you and give their complaints and y'all try to come to some common ground. I'd just like to add that in. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Williams. All right. We'll move on to item number two. Remove no truck sign on Georgia Avenue between 45th Avenue and 46th Avenue North. Requested by Gary uh, Kelster, owner of Lumberman's Wholesale. All, I believe, anyone here in favor? Okay, come to the podium, please. Give us your name, address, then we'll get the f people that are here that are opposed to it. Thank you. My name's Gary Keltner. I live at who? Gary Keltner, K E L T N E R, G A R E Y. Uh, live at 219 Wilsonia, Nashville, Tennessee. I'm a second generation owner of Lumberman's Wholesale, been in business since 1969. It's the fourth generation that this uh, piece of property, 805 42nd Avenue, has been a wholesale distribution lumber yard. And there's three other lumber yards on that same street, Oakley Lumber. And um, Kemp Call Brick was there up until 2005, and a Buck Overby construction is down the street from us. And there's 12 other industries up and down 44th Avenue that is part of the industrial overlay that follows the West Nashville railroad tracks that go from downtown in actually the Gulch, travels out till Centennial Boulevard. We've been operating semi-trucks up and down our uh, road since 1969. Our, my father-in-law who started Lumberman's Wholesale and the owner of Oakley Lumber Company next door to us in, um, came down to the TDOT meetings they had when they built Interstate 40. And they asked for a request for an underpass under 42nd Avenue to go north and south to get to Charlotte Avenue. And TDOT and the interstate people decided it was best that uh, we didn't get an underpass. They said, here's your route. Our route was right north on 46th Avenue, one block, right on Georgia, two blocks, right on 44th, and left on the frontage road, which is Delaware. If you're not familiar with the area, it, the interstate 40 goes east and west, and the exit ramp on 40 uh, turns in Delaware, the frontage road, it only runs westbound. So that's our only exit that we can get to the interstate to get into our lumber yard. If, if Delaware was a two-way street, this would be a perfect world. We wouldn't be here today. But from 1969 until 2008, we traveled north one block on Georgia and turned, excuse me, north one block on 46th Avenue and turned right on, Fort, on Georgia. Traveled two blocks to the east and turned right on 44th, back one block south to Delaware and left on Delaware that proceeded north onto where our lumber yard is, along with 12 other industries. 2008, uh, we had a neighbor uh, in the neighborhood appeal the traffic and parking, got Billy Walls to put up a no. 5,000 pound truck sign on the eastbound side of Georgia only. We happily met with that because we could turn right on 45th off of Interstate 40. In July of this year, TDOT took away our route of 45th Avenue, and that's basically a short turn off of an exit ramp. Somewhat dangerous. Our trucks have never had an accident there. There are people that leave some of the areas in automobiles and coming down the exit ramp, if you aren't careful, that's dangerous. So TDOT took our 45th route, one block north of Georgia, one block east to 44th, and one block south on 44th into our lumberyard. We're hung. Back to 2008, they also told us we could take 46th Avenue north to Michigan Avenue which at that time had zero houses between 46 and um, 44. There's also two other streets that we can put 5,000 pound trucks. Since 2008, Daniel Oakley, that owned Oakley Lumber Company, developed 38 houses on Michigan Avenue. Nice quality infill, raising the property values of our whole neighborhood, wonderful thing. Helps people in the wholesale lumber business and the retail lumber business and our taxpayers get to pay a few more taxes. So it's great. We now need our ingress route to be back onto Georgia like we've traditionally had it. 
since 19, well, actually probably since the 1940s. Actually, since the Interstate 40 cut us off. Excuse me, let's go back to that point. That's when we got cut off. But if we proceed to go up to Michigan, it's one and a half miles further. We're traveling 47 households versus seven households on one block of Georgia between 45th and 46th. I would appreciate it if you would have that sign removed. Let me also, one more point. We can travel westbound on Georgia today. Both directions, uh, westbound. We can travel both directions between 45th and 44th on Georgia. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Commissioners, my name is Matt Scanlon. I'm an attorney here with Gullet, Sanford, Robinson, and Martin, 153rd uh, Avenue South. Um, I produced a, a letter for you laying out some of the options with respect to um, these two uh, routes through the neighborhoods and what it means in terms of impact to the neighborhoods uh, and impact to actual households. And I think that the main point that we wanted to make now is that from 1969 until 2008 or, or whenever it is we, we started this route, until 2008, we ran safely and, and, and without any incident on the Georgia, on the Georgia Avenue route. Um, since we've had to, to add this extra loop around at this point, we're impacting 30 more households than we were before. Um, you know, we think this is a this is a simple matter. We only run trucks in the daytime, from 7:30 to 5. Has minimal impact on on people who are are home in the evenings. We're not running by their houses at 5 o'clock at night, 6 o'clock at night, 7 o'clock at night during dinner time. Uh, we're doing this when people are presumably, you know, away from their house at work. So we'd really appreciate your consideration of this matter. Thanks. Thank you, sir. I'm Barry Bumpus, and I'm here representing Buck Over B Construction. Uh, our address is 642nd Avenue North, and we are here to say that we'd like to have those signs removed as well. We are same, impacted the same way as Lumbermans and the other 12 people in the community are, and we'd like to have those removed as well. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Elizabeth Parrott. I'm an attorney here with um, Weinstein, Pinson, and Riley, but I'm also an officer with the Nation's Neighborhood Association, which covers this neighborhood, and we are vehemently against taking these signs down. He keeps referencing the 1960s. Well, we're in 2013, and we have had a residential explosion in our neighborhood. Based on the council going by the old plats, where we used to have one home, we have two homes going up. Um, so we have two to three times, and that's what's happened on Michigan, where they're now having to park on both sides of the street so they can't get down Michigan anymore safely. And we have residents on Georgia. There's a lot more houses on Georgia now than there were back when this route was originally done. There are children. There's, um, I know, a blind man who walks on 46 every day right by there. Um, we don't have sidewalks. We don't have many crosswalks, so it's a huge safety issue for the residents, and this neighborhood is becoming an up-and-coming neighborhood. It's becoming very pedestrian. We're also getting a lot more walking areas on 51st, so you have more pedestrians in this area than you ever had before. And so we're vehemently against doing this. They have the flyover where they can take Briley to Centennial and not come around any houses. That was done by TDOT as a safety measure, and they don't use it like they should. Instead, they want to come through the neighborhoods. We have trucks every day that ignore the 5,000-pound 5, no trucks on every one of those streets, including Kentucky, Illinois. They just have complete disregard. He talked about the turn off of the 46th Avenue off-ramp is extremely dangerous to turn right there, whether you're a car or a truck. And so, again, based on all of these, and based on the changes that are coming with the neighborhood, in fact, our neighborhoods are going to be going to the Planning Commission to work on the community design and get that updated from where it was even five years ago. So based on that, we are in direct opposition to this and would request that you leave those truck signs up for our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Tony Ruff. I live on uh, 4511 Georgia Avenue, right on the corner there of 46. Um, Mr. Ruff, for uh, you, when oh, you get Tony. through, be sure and sign in. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, it was a long time ago, but I also used to uh, drive a rig um, here in Nashville. Uh, so I do know a little bit about uh, safety and tractor trailers. Um, 46th Avenue, and I totally agree with the fact that Michigan isn't a good place to to drive down either. Um, 46th has become a terrible place for rigs as well. Uh, to make a turn, the number one reason and probably the, the biggest reason for this is a safety issue for children. Um, on the corner of 46th uh, in Georgia, directly across from my house, I'm on the on the right side of the corner there, so it's not quite a big deal for for us. Uh, but on the other corner, uh, which is um, 4510, I believe, which is uh, my neighbor William's house, there's three small boys that live in the house, um, William, uh, Torrance, and Brandon. Uh, and they are, like I said, small children. Uh, we don't have sidewalks and currently, you know, go out, run out into the street. Uh, if you're, you're driving a big rig and you're coming down 46th Avenue, you sit, you know, you're sitting six to eight feet off the ground. Uh, you can't see below you. And to make that turn, I don't care if you're on Golden Town, Georgia or Michigan, you have to swing completely in the left hand lane to make the turn onto Georgia. Um, also, when you make that turn, you wind up basically in the front yard of the house across the street. There's absolutely no room whatsoever to make that turn. Uh, if there was a sidewalk there, you would basically hit it. Uh, and that's due to the way 46th is and also the way uh, Georgia is designed. And it, it goes the same for all of these. Uh, this is a residential neighborhood. Uh, and, and I agree, it's, it's a lot different than it was in the 60s. Uh, I wasn't here in the 60s, I don't know. But um, that's, uh, that's my opinion in the matter. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My name is Emily Lamb. I am a resident of the Nations. I live on Illinois Avenue. I'm also here to speak in opposition to this application. Um, and I won't go over anything that has been said, although I would like to reiterate it for the purposes of um, y'all's knowledge that the neighborhood is opposed for all of those reasons. Um, I think it, you, if you look at this in terms of a cost risk analysis, the um, potential benefit to these handful of businesses is far outweighed by the da potential danger and the potential risk we have. Um, you know, in terms of who's home, who's at home during the day, I don't think there's any way to say this is at a daytime. This is during the day when people are presumably at, at work. A lot of people work. A lot of people don't work. Um, we have many mothers who are at home with their children. We have many mothers who work but who have babysitters come in with their children. Um, we have many elderly people in our neighborhood in this area. So I think there are a lot of people who are affected by this on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I think if you look at the number of homes that are affected by this as a, compared to the number of businesses that would potentially benefit from this, the, homes, the number of homes and the number of residents far outweighs the number of businesses. Um, the, the businesses do have a route, as um, as Ms. Parrott said. We we do. Um, they can go on Centennial. They do have a route. We're not we're not here today to discuss whether or not they can come in our neighborhood. That's an entirely separate issue. We're here to discuss whether they can come on these few few small streets, um, and they absolutely have routes they can take. Um, I would venture to say that any number of you would not want. 5,000 pound trucks on your streets on your, on your, of your homes, I would hazard a guess that the people who are here applying for this application would not want 5,000 pound trucks on their, their residential streets, um, regardless of the time of the day. Um, 
we there is a, an application with the, in front of the planning commission um, with a developer who would like to put 66 new homes just on Tennessee, which is very close to this area. So um, as Ms. Parrott said, we are growing rapidly. There are a lot of homes at risk today. There are a lot of homes that will be at risk in the next three to five years. Um, and I just ask that y'all please balance the requests of the residents who live in there day in and day out with the handful of businesses who could potentially benefit from this. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> My name is Gina Ruff. I live at 4511 Georgia Avenue. And I would just also like to emphasize uh, we do not want trucks, the 5,000 pound trucks uh, on our street. We purchased our home at the corner of Georgia and 46 in 2005, and the sign was there then. Um, that was one of the reasons I did buy the house there because I knew there were businesses on 42nd and I thought that would protect us and we would have a calmer street to live on and I have had to fight this uh, sign removal uh, from this same gentleman once and won. I believe it was 2007 maybe. I'm not sure on the exact date. And I will come to every traffic commission possible to fight to keep this sign. This sign is important for the safety of the children on our street. There's at least eight children that play, ride bicycles, we walk our dogs. We don't want these heavy trucks coming up and down the street. And it might be a surprise to Mr. Keltner, but his lumber trucks do come down the road at 5 a.m. And until you have encountered a tractor trailer at 5 a.m. while you're walking your dogs in the dark, you're, you're pretty terrified. We do not want these trucks coming down our street, and that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Thank you. Be sure and sign in, ma'am. For a chairman, let me just make one, one point, and that is that the commission's job is to handle safety issues, not commerce issues. Um, we've had some issues years ago that came up before this, well, commerce and all that came up, but we don't address commerce issues. We address traffic in regards, and there are new commissioners on uh, our commission. I just want them to know that we address safety issues, mm -hmm. not commerce issues. Yes, sir. Um, I have a current CDL Class A driver's license. I drive a semi-tractor trailer occasionally when my regular employees are not available. And I have traversed that street many days. And my R trucks have successfully gone up and down that street without an accident. And the safety issue is very much our concern also. And that's one of the main reasons I'm back today to try to get the simplest, quickest route to get this off the table to, to let our neighborhood grow. The ingress and egress that, that some people are uh, making an accusation that we have available to us off of Centennial goes through four school zones. It's 2.7 miles one way. There's 140 residents that live in the Tennessee apartments on 45th Avenue. I don't think the total number of people impacted by that route would pretty much appreciate the seven houses on Georgia. Now, I, it is... I have semis that come down my street. I don't appeal to y'all to help stop semis coming down my street. The all It is clear that the neighborhood needs a concise in and out. I can go back and forth on India right now. I can go back and forth on Michigan right now. And for the benefit of the whole community, a defined route off of 44th, 42nd, in and out needs to be clearly placed. And I am in agreement with that. And I am an advocate of safety and concern and efficiency. It would cost my business for 39 years, 2.73 miles, doesn't sound like a very big number, but in today's $20 an hour truck driver and $4 a gallon diesel fuel, if we had to go 51st Centennial for 2.7 miles, that's $577,000 of my actual cost for the next 39 years. I don't want that burden. I want the neighborhood to be progressive, and I want the safest, most efficient route. I, and I actually have a question for you as well. So, I'll ask my question while we wait. Okay. 
my, my question is you said that you represent nations the neighborhood, nation's neighborhood the nation's neighborhood association I'm so the secretary you're, you're, you're the secretary yes. for that um, does your neighborhood association that you uh, currently serve on cover the existing route that they already operate on we cover the whole nation's area from the railroad tracks over to Morrow and up to Centennial is the nation's neighborhood. So he's not even in our neighborhood. He, he's on the other side. And okay, so the current route is not... No, it's directly in our neighborhood. It's directly in your neighborhood. So I just want to make clear... They're all in our neighborhood. They're all in your neighborhood, yeah. but between the two routes, you would prefer, the Neighborhood Association would prefer the current route as opposed to what they're asking for right now. Well, the current route has them going on Michigan, which per traffic they can't do now because it's not wide enough with the number of houses. Mm -hmm. Our preferred route is that they take the flyover to Centennial and take Centennial down to the 42nd, which there are no school zones on Centennial or on Briley. You also have the ability to do an entrance. At your she, she has the floor. Let her <laughs> go ahead. But he's not in our neighborhood. There are not school zones right there. And yes, to date, thankfully, there have not been any safety concerns and no one's been hurt. But our question is, is it going to take a child getting hit by one of these to bring that to the attention and make them realize that, yes, some money is worth being spent to avoid especially as the neighborhood continues to expand and expand daily. She's right, we do have, there's one up there for 66 new homes. Most of the old houses that are getting torn down, they're having two put up in their place, it is huge grain, and there is a school right over there near Georgia. So all in all, we would like them to take the complete outside uh, route and stay out of the neighborhood, particularly off of this street, yes. Corby, let's go back to the existing and proposed routes or existing and requested. Let's be clear that we are only talking about the sign at 46th and Georgia. We're not talking about putting up a new sign at Michigan. We're not talking about making people take Centennial because that's not what was advertised on the agenda. What we're talking about today is where that circle is um, to serve eastbound trucks going towards Indiana or 42nd, whatever you want to call it. So all this talk about Michigan, I mean, it's, it's worth talking about, but we're not talking about prohibiting trucks on Michigan today. I mean, you can do what you want, but it would be unfair to the people that live out in that area. <clears throat> Commissioners, anyone have any com more comments? Do I have a motion? You do. To, uh, let's see, which one is it now? Uh, uh, I would move to the uh, removal of uh, the no signs, no truck signs on Georgia. Is that what we want? No, no we want to Re keep, keep put the keep signs up. Leave put the signs up. Leave the signs up. Leave the signs up on so, so, you're, <laughs> so you're making a motion to uh, remain keep the signs. signs. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All in favor of keeping the signs up, say aye. 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 Opposed? 100%. Ladies and gentlemen, appreciate all y'all being here. I believe that concludes our agenda. Sergeant, you make a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. All right. Good meeting. Thank you, Commissioner.